Life is like a race, except you're the only one running it. But at the same time, you can see everyone else running theirs. I'm in my 20s now, and I think it's probably the most awkward time in anyone's life. On one hand, there's people around my age who were steadily working their careers, climbing the corporate ladder, going out on the weekends, and living the typical adult life. And on the other, there's still a lot of us trying to figure it out. But I think out of all the good things you can have in life, the one thing most of us want more than anything is someone to do it with. When I look around, I see a lot of my friends in long-term relationships, and some of them have even gotten married. But I also have a lot of friends who are my age and have never even been in a relationship. Dating as a Gen Z adult is an interesting experience because dating comes with a lot of expectations. What do guys expect out of girls? What do girls expect from a guy? What does one partner expect from the other? There's this constant push and pull between what people want from each other romantically, and social media is only making it worse. It's why I think a lot of younger people think that romance is dead. Because social media is full of unrealistic expectations that I don't think 90% of young adults can meet. Yo bro, what's your type? Hmm, well, I like short girls, but I go to the gym, so I also want her to be fit too. And I kind of like when girls have a bit of an attitude, but I think confidence is hot, so I want her to have a lot of pride as well. Okay, so you said short, fit, has an attitude, and a strong sense of pride. Yeah, bro, I don't think you want a girlfriend. I think you want Vegeta. Now, I'm not blaming social media for being the reason people are single, but I think sometimes people forget that social media is just a caricature of reality and that most things shouldn't be taken so seriously. Every other day on Twitter, I see people getting worked up over hypothetical situations that would never happen in reality, but they build their entire perspective on relationships around it. Babe, would you love me if I was a worm? What? If I got magically transformed into a worm, but I was still your girlfriend, would you still love me? I mean, how could you be my girlfriend if you were a worm? Wow. Just wow. What kind of question is this? Why would you even be a worm? This is why men deserve less. How am I supposed to date a worm? The truth is that there are a lot of really cool people out there that are looking for someone compatible to spend their time with. But a lot of the time, we only get to see the negatives. And sometimes this causes us to shut ourselves down before we even give someone else the chance to possibly say yes. Believe it or not, I've had girls that were interested in me tell me they were afraid to approach me because they didn't think they were my type. But the truth is, I don't have a type. Superficial things like someone's height, weight, income, or other things are temporary. And if you base your relationship with someone on those things, then the relationship will also be temporary. I'm not saying you should treat relationships like the stock market and invest in someone you don't find attractive, hoping they glow up into a supermodel. I just think that a lot of times when you talk to people, most of them don't care that much about looks. Sure, there are shallow people out there, but not everybody is gonna like you. And it's not always about your looks. It's like your boy coming to you like, it's no use trying to date, bro. Girls don't like me because I'm not six feet. No, bro, don't say that. It's not because you're not six feet. It's because you have no swag. Dating is about finding someone who aligns with your values, priorities, and lifestyle. It won't always be a perfect fit, but you shouldn't have to put yourself in an uncomfortable position to meet someone else's expectations. A big fear when it comes to dating is the idea of being chosen versus being an option. When you're searching for someone to love, you want them to love you back equally. No one likes to think that their partner settled for them. You want to feel like you were their first option, not the backup plan. And this doesn't mean that you should only be looking for people who've never been in a relationship. That's unrealistic. It means that everyone deserves to feel like their partner chose them. That they're with you because they want to be, not because things didn't work out with the people they wanted more or that they're only with you because they couldn't get anybody else. I think in an era of social media, it's easy to compare yourself against other people, especially when you're aware that your partner was with people before you. Like if the girl you like says she likes tall guys, but you're 5'7", or all your boyfriend's exes are blonde and you have dark hair, these things can make you feel insecure and that your partner settled for you because you aren't their type. So when it comes to dating, it's really important that your partner knows that you chose them and not that they just happened to be your best option at the time. I think for a lot of young people, the scariest part of dating is dealing with commitment. A lot of people have different ways they become attached to others. Some people are more readily able to commit to someone and others are a bit more avoidant. Me personally, I'm very quick to accept people into my life and there are a lot of people I consider my friends. Pretty much, if you've ever just listened to me talk for more than 20 minutes, then I'll probably think of you as a friend. 
And this translates to my relationships because every time I meet a girl who's like, hey, you're kind of cute, we should hang out more. And I'm like, oh, bet, here's my number. But in my head, I'm already thinking about what we're gonna name our kids. My friends say I get attached too quickly and they're honestly probably right. I've dealt with girls who are more avoidant in the past and uh, it's not for the weak. But sometimes people have a fear of commitment for different reasons and that can make dating hard. And depending on what it is, sometimes you have to let that stuff go. Everyone has that one friend that's still holding on to baggage from a long time ago. Yo, bro, I met this girl today and I think she'd be perfect for you. Nah, bro, I'm never dating again. All girls are the same. Bro, are you good? What's wrong? Yeah, bro, it's just, I still have some trauma I'm dealing with from my last relationship. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. What happened? I got cheated on. Oh, that's tough, bro. How'd you find out? I went to lunch early that day and I caught her in the act. No way. Yeah. <laughs> she shared her chocolate milk with another guy at the lunch table. Wait, what? She told me I was the only guy she would share her true mood with. I couldn't believe it. Wait, bro, how long ago was this? You remember Shanice? Bro, from seventh grade? Yes, bro. We were gonna spend the rest of our lives together. Bro, that was middle school. You gotta let that go. But I remember it like it was yesterday. Bro, we were 12. I can understand not wanting to rush into a committed relationship with someone and wanting to take things slow. However, one thing that's super common with Gen Z is being caught in a situationship. A situationship is basically when you're doing all the things that people in a relationship would do without being in a relationship. Sometimes people aren't on the same page when it comes to commitment and that's fine. One person may wanna take the relationship to the next level while the other person needs some time to know if they're ready. However, you shouldn't still be acting like you're in a relationship when you're not because that's when things get confusing. Yo. So how's things going with you and that one girl? Ah, oh, man, they're great. We talk every day. We hang out all the time. I met her mom. She's been staying over. We're even sleeping in the same bed. Oh, so like, is she your girlfriend now? Whoa, whoa. Why are you throwing that G word out, man? We're just friends. Well, we've been friends for years and we never sleep in the same bed. Except that one time. Well, I mean, it's different because she's a girl, you know, but we're just chilling. Okay, so if you're just friends, then you wouldn't be mad if I tried to ask her out. I will choke slam you through the floor, bro. Exactly, bro. You clearly like her, so just wife her up. Is he talking about that one girl he's been kicking it with, but he's too scared to put a label on it? Yes, bro. Bro, if you don't man up and tell that girl you need her same day delivery like Amazon Prime. All right, bro, chill. I get not wanting to put a label on things, but what's important is that you're both on the same page. One time, I went to get lunch with a female friend of mine and everything was going great until the waitress brought the check. Apparently, since she saw a guy and a girl getting food together, she immediately assumed that we were on a date. And since it's a date, I'm supposed to pay for both of our meals. And that was crazy because before bringing the check, waiters usually ask if your meals are separate. But no, she was just like, this is a date. You're a man, so you pay. My friend offered to cover her half, but at that point, I had already accepted my fate. So yeah, make sure it's clear where you stand with someone before you end up spending $53 on a burger and fries. One unique thing about dating for Gen Z though is that we have a lot of options when it comes to looking for love. Obviously there's traditional dating where you meet someone either on your own or through your friends and you start talking and then eventually start dating. But there's also online dating where you create your profile, get a match, and hope that the stranger you meet is normal enough to not make you wanna block them on everything the second the date is over. And there's also e-dating, which is cringe. Traditional dating may seem less common among Gen Z with how prevalent dating apps are, but a lot of relationships still start this way, especially if you're still in school where you're regularly surrounded by people around your age. There are a lot of obstacles that get in the way of traditional dating though, like having enough free time to go out and meet people, or having enough personal connections to find an available partner, or even just having enough money to keep going on dates. But the biggest hurdle by far is dealing with rejection. No is one of the hardest words to hear. Building up the courage to approach someone is hard enough as it is, and for it to not go your way really stinks. People walk around every day with countless insecurities living in the back of their head. So no matter who you are, being rejected can make you feel like you're just not good enough. And that's fair. You've probably heard it before. The worst she can say is no. And no, it's not the worst thing she can say. You could walk up to a girl and ask her out and she could look at you and say, Ew. I would never go out with an ugly, stinky, bald-headed, swagless nerd like you. My standards aren't that low. And honestly, at that point, you're cooked. 
But that's only the worst case scenario. Most of the time, rejection usually goes like this. Hey, uh, I saw you across the way there and I thought you were really pretty. I was wondering if you'd like to go out sometime. Oh, that's really sweet. Thank you. But I'm not really looking for anything at the moment. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, no worries. Have a nice day. No matter how nice it is, rejection always hurts. And for most guys at least, I don't even think it's a fear of rejection, but rather a fear of being seen as a creep. And I completely understand. The thought of making a woman uncomfortable is almost unbearable. But you can't let your fear of rejection turn into a fear of approaching people in general. All right, bro, I'm finally gonna do it. Today I'm gonna tell that girl how I really feel. Bet, bro, you're in there. I'm telling you, just play it cool. You're right, bro, I just gotta stay confident. Excuse me. Do you know what time the library closes? I need to return this book, but I'm trying to figure out if I should do it before or after my next class. Could you help me out here? Um, he, uh, had to go to the bathroom. Despite the challenges, I still think dating traditionally is one of the best ways to meet someone. Your friends can help put you on with people they think will match your personality, and it gives you a more organic connection with someone that can grow over time. Online dating isn't really a new thing anymore, and honestly, it isn't as bad as it used to be. I have a few friends who met their partners on dating apps, and they're honestly in very happy, healthy relationships with people they met online. I think the biggest issue with online dating though is that since you're dealing with strangers, it can be very superficial. The only thing they really have to go off of initially is your appearance and whatever you put on your profile. So sometimes it's hard to really find someone who's a good match for you. It also goes against the number one rule of the internet, which is to never link up with random people you met online. But it does lead to one of my favorite games, which is figuring out how long it takes for your date to finally reveal themselves as a weirdo. Wow, this was such a nice date. I really enjoyed talking to you. Of course, you're such an interesting person. Can I ask you something before we leave? Sure, what's up? Can I take a picture of your feet? Your toes look very nice and I would love to set them as the wallpaper on my phone. Wh what? I, I thought you said you like girls with a good soul. No, no, no. I said I like girls with good souls. Here, just hold still for a second. Um, I think my Uber's here. And then there's e-dating. Oh boy. The digital age has changed the way we do a lot of things, including dating. And e-dating is something that's really common among people who don't go outside a lot. And don't get me wrong, I've been playing video games since I was four. And over the years, I've met a lot of really cool people online and would even consider them good friends. I think just about everyone in Gen Z has at least one friend that they've never actually met in person. E-dating isn't too different from your typical long distance relationship, but it's definitely a relatively new experience. One day, you and your homie are queuing swift plays and an e-girl with a soft voice gets on your team. Now you see him duo queuing on his alt and silver at 4 a.m. I know I make fun of e-dating a lot, but genuinely, if you're happy with someone you met in a Discord server, then that's great. But I've also seen a lot of e-relationships in badly with leaked DMs full of messages I wish I never saw. So if you're gonna e-date, make sure she's only for you and not for the hashtag general. No matter what kind of situation you find yourself in, it's important that you always remember to be yourself. You don't need to be someone else to attract a certain type of person. And if you feel the need to act like someone you're not to impress someone, then they're probably not worth it. There are people out there who will like you for you. You don't have to pretend. So just stick to being yourself. We all know that one guy that starts acting different when girls come around. Bro, there's no way he's beating Goku. Nobody can beat Goku. Dude, I'm telling you, with Gear 5, Luffy solos the verse. Bro, he's not touching Goku. You're tweaking. Bro, the Toon Force. I'm telling you the nah, Toon bro, Force. Nah, bro, I'm not bro, trying like, to hear it, You don't know about the Toon touching Force. Goku. Hey, guys. Oh, hey, what's up? What you guys doing? Oh, we were just having an anime debate. Like, this guy thinks Luffy can be- I mean, that was really more so him. Like, I'm not really into all that anime stuff for real. It's like kind of immature for me. Are you guys talking about anime? I love anime. Have you guys seen Hunter x Hunter? Oh, uh, Hunter x Hunter? Yeah, that's my show. Like, Killer Will, like, that's my favorite character. Bro, weren't you just calling it mid, like, last week? Bro, chill. You always bringing up old stuff. Like, I'm a different man now. Right. Um, anyway, I was coming over to ask if you still needed your shift covered tomorrow. My schedule opened up and I wanted some extra hours. Oh, yeah, it's perfect. I really needed to be off tomorrow. So, if you can, that'd be great. Yeah, bro. Now you can come to the gym. Like, I be going every day. In fact, probably about to go now, low key, probably hit the bench. Um, yeah, so I'll text you when I pick your shift up, okay? Yeah, thank you. I mean, you can text me too, though. <laughs> to sum it up, relationships are complicated. And a lot of times, finding the person who's right for you takes a lot of trial and error. 
Some people get lucky and are able to find the right person for them at a young age. And for others, it takes a while. What matters is that you remember to prioritize yourself just as much as you value the relationship. You shouldn't lose yourself just to be with someone else. So make sure you take time to focus on you as well. Don't become one of those people who spends every second of their life with their significant other and invest in a support system outside of your partner too. When it comes to relationships, it can be easy to turn a good thing into a bad thing. And the key to making sure things don't go south is finding balance. Don't hang on to something bad for too long, but also don't be quick to let a good thing go just because you hit a bump in the road. Like all things, a healthy relationship takes patience, compromise, and maturity. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and thanks for 20K. Peace.